Tesla reports earnings after the bell tomorrow. And the chart master says the electric automaker is sitting on a knife's edge heading into the report. So let's bring in Carter Worth of Worth Charting with the technical tale. Carter, take it away. Well, that's right. I mean, you can feel the tension. It's it's uh, the definition is a nice edge. It's sitting finely balanced between success and failure. We have this tight, tight range. You see it annotated there on the screen. Every chart we're going to look at is the same chart over different time frames. So basically, if you take it back a little further, we've been I would call this um, high uh, volatility, low variance. We're not moving anywhere, but we're stuck with these wild gyrations of 20 percent between essentially 600 and 800. If you pull it back even further, you'll see basically where this debate or standoff is occurring. It's occurring under the trend line, having broken trends. So again, it's near perfect equilibrium, bears and bulls balanced evenly. And of course, we know exactly what's going to resolve it, as is so often the case. The funny methods, they're going to say something in their earnings that people generally hate or like enough to move it substantially higher or lower. Highly unlikely that it stays range bound like this. Now, it's now is it a coin toss? It's as close to that as you're going to get. We've put out reports saying that we think it's going to break the downside, but I'll just tell you this, of uh, some 2,000 respondents, both at the institutional level, the individual level, and on Twitter, it's running 60-40 uh, that it will go down. 40% are saying, no, it's going to get resolved up. Hmm. Really interesting stuff there. That is quite a tight range looking at those different uh, time periods. Thanks, Carter. Guy, where do you stand on where Tesla's going to go from here? Are you in the 60 camp, the 40 camp? Well before I say that, I'm sure Karen will get a kick out of this. Clearly, Carter, um, coming to us from the Guggenheim at the Kandinsky exhibition. <laughs> Wonderful job by Carter, number one. Number two, I, you know, I'm with Carter on this. Listen, last quarter, that April quarter was astonishing, and the stock traded up to, I think, 1,100, obviously only to sell off to low 600s, and here we are now. I think you're going to see a similar move. I think the stock probably bounces post-earnings, but you sell it again. And I don't think... Um, I don't think we've heard the last of former President Trump's rants about Elon Musk, and I think they're going to get more uh, directed and may come more at him in terms of Tesla the stock. So I think there are a lot of chapters left in this Tesla story, and I'm going to be having my popcorn on the sideline. But I think <laughs> higher post earnings, lower after, just like last quarter. Hmm. Gene, you're still with us, Gene Munster. I think that uh, you believe that there is a long-term story here for the bulls, right? What do you make of Tesla? Well, the first step is uh, remove religious conversation. This is a religion, and I try to be judicious at not falling into uh, thinking this is too good or too bad of a company. I just look at uh, what I see as the facts. The facts are that uh, the auto industry is a two and a half trillion dollar market, and that Tesla is one of the few companies that are leaders there, and they have outsized demand for their products. And I want to just quickly put some of the demand into perspective is that in the June quarter, they reported 27 percent delivery growth, down from 67 percent in the March quarter, disappointing deceleration. When you adjust for Shanghai, the growth would have been similar to what it was in March. It would have been 68 percent, so call it unchanged. The reason why growth is high, despite the fact that it's getting more expensive to buy a car, more expensive to take loans out on a car, is that people want their cars. And so I don't know if the stock is going to be up or down after they report. But I do uh, know that demand for their products outpaces their ability to produce them. And when I compare the 200 and call it 60,000 vehicles that Tesla produced globally to the 7,000, this is apples and oranges, but that GM sold electric vehicles that GM sold in the U.S. in the June quarter. It is such a wide gap. It makes me believe that this company will find its way uh, to a much higher valuation. And just to finish the thought where this ultimately goes, again, not investment advice, but I think this is a $2,500 stock over the next five years. I think that ultimately it's going to be more than just electric cars. I believe that their solar business is going to get moving. I also think that they can do other things, whether it's related to insurance or uh, related to HVAC systems. There's, uh, I think the robot is a dream. That's not going to play into the model, Optimus Prime. But no other car company has all of those optionality on the table. And I think that's what makes this uh, company a unique investment opportunity. That and its founder, of course, as well. Gene, thank you very much. The stock thank is you. sitting at 736, so 2,500 will be quite a run from here in five years, but we'll see if we can do it. We'll see you back tomorrow after the report. Tim, what's your take on Tesla? Gene says he's not going to make a call on whether the stock is up or down after the report, but you can get out your crystal ball. 
Well, I'll speak to Tesla the religion, and and so in other words, the sentiment and the cult-like status, I believe, is is what we're referencing here. Stocks significantly underperformed uh, the higher beta part of the market that's rallied over the last couple of weeks, and even uh, off of Memorial Day, you've actually had the Nasdaq outperforming the S&P by about five percent. Um, is is that a change in character? Not necessarily. But for a stock, again, on the religion side that moved 160 percent on two events, uh, essentially in calendar 2020, which were the S&P inclusion and were a stock split. Um, just, you know, what are those next moments? I, I look at the fundamentals. I look at a 60 P.E. Uh, I just don't think stocks are trading at those uh, those premiums or will be. And I think there's still some you know, ratcheting down of that to go. I also just look at competition in Asia from Hyundai, from, you know, from from Kia, from you know some of the big uh, conglomerates in that part of the world where I do think EV continues to move forward. So this was always a competitive story. Uh, and right now, I actually think that the competition has closed the gap. That, that was the story two years ago and Tesla outperformed. But uh, the religion is something to pay close attention to because I think it's tough to get that kind of a following in this market.